चैतन्य चतामित क्लास और श्रीमद भागवतम क्लास विच एवर वे यू वॉन्ट टू टेक इट बिकॉज ऑल दो इट इज चैतन्य चतामित क्लास द श्लोका इज फ्रॉम श्रीमद भागवतम एंड वी वॉन्ट टू डिस्कस दे ओम अज्ञान तिमीरांधस्य ज्ञानांजन शलाकय चक्षुरुन्मील ये नस्म श्री गुरव नम श्रीचैतन्यमनोभीष्ट स्थापित ये नूतले स्वयं रूप कदा मेय ददा सपदाक वंदेह श्रीगुरश्रीयुतपकमल श्रीगुरून वैष्णवश्च श्रीरूप सागरचात सह गुण रघुनाथ तम सजीव साेत सवधूत पिजन सहित कृष्ण चैतन्य श्रीराधा कृष्ण पादान सह गुण ललिता श्री विशाखा हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधु दीनबंधु जगतपते गोपेश गोपिका कांता राधा कांत नमस्तुते तप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानु सुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिये वाछाकूभ कृपा सिंधुभ्य पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवीभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर शिवासदी गौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे सो बिफोर वी स्टार्ट एंड डिसाइड द श्लोका दिस इज आदि लीला चैप्टर वन The spiritual masters, text number fifty-four, and here the Lord is describing uh, what is Maya. Now, in order to understand why the shloka is here in Chetan Chetamit, you must understand this chapter is the spiritual masters. So, in the you go backward in the previous shlokas. Shri Krishna Das Kavraj Goswami explains that the instructing spiritual master and the initiating spiritual master are the representation of the supreme lord and then he quotes the shloka that the mercy the lord is extending to the conditioned souls by becoming spiritual masters is incomparable then he quotes that lord krishna inspires the devotee with spiritual knowledge who serves him with love and then he begins to show that how the lord himself becomes the instructing spiritual master of brahma ji everyone is able to follow how he is showing how the the voice is not clear we have to talk about maya so i have to chant loudly so the maya goes away i hope you can hear me maybe i was just trying to be little soft okay everyone can hear me now yes so okay i'll build up the shloka why the shloka is here the shloka is here because the theme is the chapter's name is spiritual masters and shila krishna das kavraj goswami has explained that the lords the lord becomes himself becomes instructing spiritual master or initiating spiritual master himself means they are his direct representation and then he explains that lord inspires sp- uh, spiritual knowledge within the heart of a devotee who is having your love he who serves him with love and then he further says that lord brahma was instructed as an instructing spiritual master by lord shri krishna or lord vishnu himself so how the lord is instructing what knowledge is lord is giving to brahma ji has been explained in the shlokas by quoting the the chatur shloki bhagavatam and which is mentioned in second canto is that okay why this shloka is here fine so now if you read Sh- shrimad bhagavatam second canto brahma ji when he sees the lord after his tapasya is completed so he asks about lord's form 
and in 2.9.27 he asks what is maya yogena what is your maya so to explain that question the lord answers this question oh, sorry on this on this shloka what was the question of brahma ji my dear lord what is your maya maya yoga so to answer that lord is answering this question uh, saying this shloka in chatur shloki bhagavatam what is maya is everyone with me is follow so please chant after me रिते अर्थम यत प्रतीयेता प्रतीयेत चात्मनी तद्विद्या आत्मनो माया यथा भासो यथा तम सिनानिम रिते विदाउट अर्थम वैल्यू य That which, which pratiyeta appears to be, na not, not. pratiyeta appears to be, cha certainly, atmani in relation to me, tad that, vidyat you must know, atmanah my, mayam. इलूचरी एनर्जी यथा जस्ट एज आभास द रिफ्लेक्शन यथा जस्ट एज तम द डार्कनेस क्वेश्चन व्हाट अपीयर्स टू बी ट्रुथ विदाउट मी इज सर्टेनली माय इलूचरी एनर्जी फॉर नथिंग कैन एग्जिस्ट विदाउट मी It is like a reflection of a real light in the shadows for in the light there are neither shadows nor reflections purport In the previous verse the absolute truth and its nature have been explained One must also understand the relative truth to actually know the absolute The relative truth which is called maya or material nature is explained here maya has no independent existence one who is less intelligent is captivated by the wonderful activities of maya but he does not understand that behind these activities is the direction of the supreme lord in the bhagavad gita it is said maya dakshina prakriti suyate sacha rajaram the material nature is working and producing moving and non moving beings only by the supervision of krishna the real nature of maya the illusory existence of the material manifestation is clearly explained in shrimad bhagavatam the absolute truth is substance and the relative truth depends upon its relationship to the absolute for its existence maya means energy therefore the relative truth is explained to be the energy of the absolute truth since it is difficult to understand the distinction between the absolute and relative truths an analogy can be given for clarification the absolute truth can be compared to the sun which is appreciated in terms of two relative truths reflection and darkness darkness is the absence of sunshine and reflection is a projection of sunlight into darkness neither darkness nor reflection has an independent existence darkness comes when the sunshine is blocked for example if one stands facing the sun his back will be in darkness since darkness stands in the absence of the sun it is therefore relative to the sun the spiritual world is compared to the real sunshine and the material world is compared to the dark regions where the sun is not visible when the material manifestation appears very wonderful this is due to a perverted reflection of the supreme sunshine the absolute truth as confirmed in the vedanta sutra whatever one can see here has its substance in the absolute as darkness is situated far away from the sun so the material world is also far away from the spiritual world the vedic literature directs us not to be captivated by the dark regions tamah but to reach the shining regions of the absolute yogi dham the spiritual world is brightly illuminated but the material world is wrapped in darkness 
इन द मटीरियल वर्ल्ड सनशाइन मूनशाइन और डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ आर्टिफिशल लाइट आर रिक्वायर्ड टू डिस्पेल डार्कनेस स्पेशली एट नाइट फॉर बाई नेचर द मटीरियल वर्ल्ड इज डार्क देर फॉर द सुप्रीम लॉर्ड हैज अरेंज फॉर सनशाइन एंड मून शाइन बट इन इज अबोड एज डायरेक्टेड इन सॉरी एज डिस्क्राइब इन द भगवद गीता देर इज नो नेसेसिटी फॉर लाइटिंग बाय सनशाइन मून शाइन और इलेक्ट्रिसिटी बिकॉज एवरीथिंग इज सेल्फ एफर्जन That which is relative, temporary, and far away from the absolute truth is called Maya or ignorance. This illusion is exhibited in two ways, as explained in the Bhagavad Gita. The inferior illusion is inert matter, and the superior illusion is the living entity. The living entities are called illusory in this context only because they are implicated in the illusory structures and activities of the material world. Actually, the living entities are not illusory. for they are parts of the supreme energy of the supreme lord and do not have to be covered by maya if they do not want to be so the actions of the living entities in the spiritual kingdom are not illusory they are the actual eternal activities of liberated souls so let us try to please show the shloka rite artham yat pratiyata rite artham arth means meaning something which has an existence without value value you can say so something which we see as of having any value but not having a relationship with the lord is called maya now in the purport you have read already that maya does not have an independent existence did you not hear this so you can see the definition of maya is also dependent on supreme lord what is maya something which you see not something which you seem to which we see that it is existing but not dependent on the supreme lord is called maya so the definition of maya itself is dependent on the absolute then a question can be raised why do we need to have this kind of maya because we want to enjoy you if you have noticed it's very interesting point shila prabhupad has mentioned at the end of his purport the living entities activities in the spiritual world are not illusory have you not noted this point and if the living entity does not want to be bound he won't be bound Did you read this? We read this just now at the end. So this is something very interesting. We are becoming bound because we want to be bound. So why I am saying all this? Why there has to be a situation where everything, although depends on the Supreme Lord, but an illusory perception is created that nothing depends on the Supreme Lord. are you able to follow my question so answer is very simple because we want to be bound yagyarthat karmano anyatra loko yam karma bandhana if any action is done for the lord for yagya for vishnu we are liberated if a person understand that everything's emanation is coming from krishna then he will serve krishna where is the question of bondage then are you able to follow अहम सर्व प्रभव मत सर्व प्रवर्तते इति मत्वा भजनते माम बुद्धा भाव समन्विता वेन अ पर्सन अंडरस्टैंड एवरीथिंग इज कृष्णा एवरीथिंग इज कृष्णा एंड एवरीथिंग इज कृष्णा एवरीथिंग इज कमिंग फ्रॉम कृष्णा बीइंग द एनर्जी ऑफ द लॉर्ड इट इज नॉट डिफरेंट फ्रॉम कृष्णा सो हाउ ही कैन डेवलप एन एंजॉइंग मेंटेलिटी सो दिस माया इज नीडेड बिकॉज आई वॉन्ट इट टू बी बाउंड अप सो इज दैट वेरी क्लियर now what is this relative existence this is very interesting you can we can make a triangle and that triangle there are three points obviously triangle means three points and in each of these three points you can put three people knower known and knowledge are you able to follow this point in a triangle there is knower there is knowledge and there is known Now in this world, what do we see except these three things? If I ask you, what is this? 
this is a watch and what time it is showing 8:20 this watch is not you and the and the knowledge which i am having that this is a watch is also not me there are three points can you follow this point this this watch you is this is not me and for this object to be known there is a need of knowledge and knower so do you agree that they are all interdependent is it getting too complicated or <laughs> is it not is it quite funny is it not anything in this world we need three, three things and they are not actually same thing but in the spiritual world krishna is there he is a knower what is he speaks in bhagavad gita gyanam geyam gyana gamyam hridi sarvasya vishtitam he is knowledge he is known uh, he is knowledge he is knower and he is object of, object of knowledge what is that you know this shloka offer um, by all the vedas i am to be known sarvasya chaham na vedesh sarvar aham eva vidyam known so object of knowledge is krishna the knowledge is krishna and the knower also is krishna i know everything so he is absolute he is not dependent on the existence of these three objects this is creation of maya here creation of a relative world where everything has a starting and end and all those things are there so okay first point what we learned is that maya does not has an independent existence of the supreme lord now the example of darkness and abhas or projection has been given this has been explained very nicely shri shridhar swami explains what is this maya very interesting perception of something which is not existing this is called abhas i'll repeat again something which is not existing i'm seeing it an example is given dwi chandra seeing two moons has anyone had that experience if not you can try uh, not for long bring your eyes at the center of your nose and then look at the sun then you will see most probably you will see two suns have you tried that as a kid or you press your eyes like this then you start uh, seeing two things so are there are two sun uh, two moons hindi mein samajh mein aayega ab haas ho raha hai ki chandra hai there is a appearance that there is there are two moons the effect of maya is perceived in first way as abhas of something an appearance of something which is not actually there is everyone with me are we good on this point abhas means ex- appearance of something which is not there just like there are two two moons so what is not there existence of this world separate from supreme lord is perceived by us or not ye abhas ho raha hai ki nahi all of us are born and being bona fide conditioned souls we all have got senses but we never question who has given us these senses so are we not uh, automatically assuming that these senses are for my enjoyment nobody can nobody has to raise hands for that as soon as we are born we assume that these senses belong to us do you agree with this and then we start enjoying is it not maya we never think that these senses have not been created by us it has been if it has not been created by me how can i use it as per my dis- my, my desires we never question is it not and it's not that when we have heard a little bit of philosophy or spoken a little bit of philosophy then we immediately understand also is still we have a very deep acceptance of this abhas that i am independent and my senses belong to me and i can use them the way i want is it truth i am saying do do our senses belong to us no but there is a perception abhas just like the perception of two so now again 
द आभास ऑफ टू मूस कैन ओनली एक्स आभास यू अंडरस्टैंड परसेप्शन कैन ओनली बी देयर इफ देर इज वन ओरिजिनल मून यू कांट हैव अपेरेंट मून विदाउट द ओरिजिनल मून सो ओरिजिनल मून इज कृष्णा कृष्ण चंद्र एंड दिस वर्ल्ड इज सीन एज द्वितीय द्वितीय दिस इज समथिंग डिफरेंट विच इज नॉट कनेक्टेड टू कृष्णा आर यू एबल टू फॉर दिस इज वेरी सी दिस इज कॉल्ड अभास ना तमहा इज कंसिडर एज डार्कनेस दिस इज परसेप्शन ऑफ नॉन परसेप्शन ऑफ समथिंग विच एग्जिस्ट इन डार्कनेस वी कांट सी समथिंग विच एग्जिस्ट डू यू अग्री फर्स्ट वन वॉज परसेप्शन ऑफ समथिंग विच डज नॉट एग्जिस्ट इज कॉल्ड आभास एंड यथा तमह मीन्स परसेप्शन और नॉन परसेप्शन ऑफ समथिंग विच एग्जिस्ट एंड द एग्जाम्पल इज गिवेन ऑफ राहु राहु इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड तमह सो एज वी नो राहु इज अ कॉज ऑफ सूर्य ग्रहण वॉट इज एट सूर्य ग्रहण सन सोलर सोलर इक्लिप्स वॉट वी सी इज सोलर इक्लिप्स वी डोंट सी राहू नो बडी सीज राहू सो राहू विच एग्जिस्ट इज नॉट सीन is it getting too comp see i was asking dharmatma prabhu prabhu ji give me i want some challenge <laughs> yesterday with prasad prabhu prabhu ji gave me the challenging shloka this is not an easy shloka to understand so i said you you draw, drive away all my ignorance by this <laughs> this is i have to really apply your mind on this are you able to follow this rahu example rahu exist or not rahu exist but we don't see so rahu is compared to tamaha darkness so just as in darkness we are not able to see things which exist so what we are not able to see krishna simple krishna exist inside outside everywhere but amazing thing is that we don't see krishna anywhere except that's why we have to start seeing krishna first in the deity and then in the hearts of living entity and slowly slowly progress is it acceptable krishna is everywhere everywhere if if nobody has to answer this but all of us have committed sinful activity there is no exception for that so why are we committing sinful activity especially behind doors because nobody can see because inside my door krishna is not there is it not one devotee was very nicely putting it in this world there is air air tight is it not and water tight also but is there something called akash tight sky tight can you is there any place where there is no sky so similarly there is nothing like parmatma tight it's nothing like where you can have a space where parmatma is not there is it not very wonderful example just like Ak- akash is everywhere similarly krishna is everywhere so he is seeing us everywhere just imagine so what am i am giving the example we are not perceiving some someone something krishna Who is everywhere? Is it not because of Maya? Okay, I will trouble you more. This is only one aspect. Now let us again go back to Avhas. We very strongly feel that satisfying our senses will make us happy. Nobody is saying yes. Everybody is a Paramahansa here. Okay. <laughs> okay okay i i i i not say we we is too much it might be offensive to the devotees i very much consider that satisfying by my senses i will become happy is it not abhas atma has no connection with the with the body nobody says yes nobody says no i don't know which party you belong to do you do you, do you, do you agree we have no connection with the body nothing we are not this body this is very simple i am also not the body and the devotees in front of me are also not their bodies and see how much we are, have this perception that by satisfying my mind and my body i will become happy is it not whenever we have become angry with someone who has really offended us first he has seen us is it not and then he has offended us is it not he must have first seen us and then offended us do you agree what i am speaking Yes, you must have seen us. Have you seen us? If we cannot see ourselves, how can anyone else see us? And then we take such a great offense. No, such a great offender. He is not realizing my glories. I am one by ten thousand the tip of a hair, and he does not consider my value. 
Now, is it not a wrong perception? Is it, are we not suffering from this perception that we are this body? Abhas, is it not because of Maya? So, silence means approval. <laughs> so, if the devotees are silent, I agree that you are approving of my statement. So, at least I should, I will not say you or we, I will say I should recognize that I am in Maya. Then I can take the medicine properly. I can talk about myself. I am 100% convinced, I must tell you that by satisfying my senses, I will be happy. I love to sleep, I love to eat, is it not? Other things you don't want to talk about, these two things we are very much attached to. I hope, at least for my, in one time, uh, one devotee asked Gauranga Prabhu, Are you able to hear Krishna's flute? And Gauranga Prabhu gives a very nice answer. He says, First, you should love to hear the alarm which rings in the Mangalarti time. <laughs> Right now, we don't even like the sound of the alarm which rings in the Mangalati. We will we'll want to sleep, is it not? I don't know. I don't want to get... Please, you will... You will you, some of the devotees might raise hand, but I don't like to wake up for Mangalati. It's a struggle for me, at least. Even after, after I wake up, it is very good. We take bath, it is good. But first question is, who, who is that rascal who put this alarm on this? And the rascal is myself only. I put alarm for three. Who is this fellow who is disturbing, disturbing my sleep? So we are identifying with our body so much. We have to accept that. This is perception of something which does not exist. Do you agree? Our happiness is not dependent on the satisfaction of our body. This is a siddhanta, this is the truth. But perception is that we are fully dependent on satisfying our senses. What an illusion. Example is given. Any devotee who will have a bike Many times you must have had this experience that you forget when did you fill up your bike. Do we forget like this for our stomach also? No. I will tell you the truth. I am also hungry. <laughs> I am also looking at 9 am the class has to be finished before so that we can go for prasadam. So you see, we are not telling the devotee should not eat but how much we think that we are dependent on that. Even one uh, medicine wala man, one of my friend who is giving me Ayurvedic treatment, he is insisting, you want to get cured, you take a fruit diet. I said, I will die, but I will not do. <laughs> I said, you want to kill me, you can kill me, but I will not come on only fruit diet. It is not possible. See how I am conditioned? I am talking about myself. This is a perception that I cannot live without satisfying the, with the, this body with, with at least some, some grains. And then it can be extended to so many varieties of sense gratification which we actually imagine. Again, I am explaining the word abhas. And tamaha means ignorance. Do we accept that spiritual bliss exists for atma? Yes. And we are all targeting that. But do we perceive it? Got it? See, wonderfully explained by the acharyas. Do we perceive the spiritual bliss? So you see again, same thing. Something which is not existing is perceived. That is abhas. And even though the Lord is telling, what is the shloka? Uh, contact the subjects. Yehi sanspar shaja bhoga dukha yonaya evate adyanta vant kaunteya na teshu ramate budha contact of the senses with the sense object is the only cause of miseries but that we don't perceive what we perceive this is very pleasurable so okay now let us analyze this shloka contact of the senses with the sense object is the cause of misery is it abhas or is it tamah this i will ask a question now is it abhas or is it tamah our devotee ramakrishna Prabhu is saying Tamaha. Why Tamaha? The, the, the suffering is there, but we can't perceive that the suffering is there. That's why those who are enlightened, na teshu ramate buddha, they don't indulge in that. At any point, they don't indulge in it. And there Srila Prabhupada quotes, Ramante yogi no nante satyananda chidatvani iti rama pade nasau parabrahma abhidhiyate they don't take pleasure in sense gratification, but it doesn't mean that they don't take pleasure in anything else. So they are free from Maya. They are very much aware their happiness is coming from spiritual activities. Prabhupada mentioned this point. 
that the activities of liberated souls is not illusory. So, I hope the points are getting clear. Srila Prabhupada is explaining here, I, I will go further now to explain something is on this topic. Let's see, we have some time. Last time, I have 20 minutes from last time. So I finished too early. This time I am not going to leave. <laughs> so, this is Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur. He explains the shloka but in a little different style. I cannot explain the full commentary, does it, time does not permit. But he explains something about this Maya. And only that section a little bit I will touch upon. He says, Rite Artham Pratiyeta. Maya has two forms. Yoga Maya and you know that Maha Maya. This is really nice. Please hear carefully. He says, Maya acts partly partly favorably and partly unfavorably towards the jiva who is trying to gain knowledge and realization of Paramatma. So, when a person realizes Paramatma, that is function of Yoga Maya. But when we forget Krishna, that is Mahamaya. That is easy to understand. Now, this is really nice. Rite Artham Pratiyeta. Rite means without. And Artham means value or basically Artham means Krishna. So by Yoga Maya, nothing is perceived except Krishna. Rite Artham Prati Yeta. Except Artham, nothing is perceived. What is that shloka? Uh, Yomam Pashyati Sarvatra Sarvam Maicha Mai Pashyati Tasyaham Na Pranashami Nacha Me Pranashami. Very beautiful. And we also hear about the Mahabhagavat. Sthavar jangam dekhe na dekhe tar murti sarvatra hoye tar ishta dev spurti. A pure devotee, wherever he sees, he sees Krishna. Just like Srila Prabhupada, I heard that when he saw some very nice waterfalls, very beautiful, I don't know what, which ones. And then Prabhupada said that you are looking at this beautiful waterfall, but it reminds me of Krishna. So people, that's what Prabhupada was telling in this purport also. People are very much attracted to the material energies show. But a devotee is interested in the showman who is behind it. So this Yoga Maya acts in relationship with the devotees by giving spurti or a realization of Krishna everywhere. So he only perceives a real object Krishna and Krishna's hand everywhere. Also, for non-devotees, Mahamaya will Mahamaya will cause perception of will cause non-perception of Krishna. Srila Prabhupada also explained here in the purport, Krishna is the substance, Vastu. Now, what does Vastu mean? Vastu means which has non-changing existence in past, in the present and in the future. It exists as same in all circumstances. So it is mentioned here that one aspect we learn, Yoga Maya will cause a person to see Krishna everywhere. And other aspect of Maya is, she will not allow a person to see Krishna anywhere. We know this example of Hiranyakashipu and Prahlad. Prahlad Ji was, Prahlad Maharaj was seeing Krishna everywhere. Is this the effect of Maya or Yuga Maya? It may, maybe the pigeon did not like my class. <laughs> my dear pigeon Prabhu, Mataji told me, uh, told us, Dev Shakti Mataji, they are liberated souls. Is it not? They are already in Nitya Siva. The pigeons and the peacocks, Dev Shakti Mataji, he told. So it seems I spoke something against Siddhanta, so he is uh, <laughs> correcting me. <laughs> Get down from the Vyasasana. <laughs> something like that. Okay, I am speaking as per my intelligence. If something I am speaking wrong, you please correct me. We have no problem. So, we are, we are Maha, so Maha Maya like that. So, this can be divided into two sections. Vidya, which reveals the Lord. And Avidya, which covers the... Not the Lord. Not the Lord. The vision of the soul. Just like the, uh, the clouds can't cover the sun. The clouds can only cover our vision. 
ऑल दो वी से द सन हैज गॉट कवर्ड दैट इज रॉन्ग सन इज नेवर कवर्ड वी गेट कवर्ड सो ही से इज एन एग्जाम्पल ऑफ विद्या विद्या पोर्शन ऑफ माई यू नो दैट देर इज विद्या देर इज अविद्या एंड देर इज प्रधान सो विद्या पोर्शन इज एक्सप्लेन हियर सो इट इज यथा भाषा इट्स लाइक अ इल्यूमिनेशन इन द लैम्प ऑफ अ लैम्प इन अ होम सो इफ देर इज अ लैम्प इन अ होम देन इफ देर इज अ पॉट और क्लॉथ then it helps us to perceive that pot or cloth which is existing is it really too complicated yatha bhasha is explained that means just like there is light in a room it helps us to see things which are there i again i think is getting complicated maya has two functions vidya which means reveal the lord and avidya which is which is covering the lord so uh, yatha bhasha means just like there is a lamp to explain vidya if the lamp is there then things which were not perceivable due to darkness is perceivable now so the lord is everywhere and his energies are everywhere but it is not being perceived by the soul so when it comes comes in contact with vidya it can perceive is that easy but if you take the lamp away that means if you remove vidya part then the cloth which was previously existing is not that the that the existence of cloth came by light are you getting this point the cloth was always there the lamp illuminated us and we could see the cloth is not that by that lord is created lord is always there his energies are always there he is always the proprietor but when we become illuminated or our consciousness is illuminated by vidya then we can see the lord is there it's a very simple point and is a very interesting all of us have experienced if there is absolute darkness one thing is fe- one, one thing we fear is maybe there is a snake maybe there is a scorpion so there is a fear of something which is non existing because of darkness so when there is light that fear goes away so this is also function of vidya what are we fearful of many things but one which one thing which we are fearful of is death although the living entity is not born we are also fearful of defamation we are also fearful of so many things in this world we cannot say that we are not fearful so as we come in contact with vidya we begin to our consciousness has become illuminated we become fearless just like socrates was awarded death sentence and the soldiers came to kill him and he was very peaceful he said you can kill me but first you have to catch me so because of his austerity or whatever he was very much aware that i am not this body and they killed him or killed his body so are you able to follow this the vidya shakti that means yoga maya potency i can say it helps us to realize krishna everywhere who was already there and it also dispels the fear which is there in the heart shila prabha very clearly says in bhagavad gita abhayam satva sanshuddhi when the heart is purified a person becomes fearless because he can perceive that krishna is in everyone's heart and he will take care of me so this is example of abhas and then example don't worry this is the last thing i'm speaking <laughs> and the example of avidya is given which is sithatamah is darkness that means pot or cloth in the house are there but that is not perceived similarly krishna is everywhere but because of avidya we get covered and we don't know sim also the bliss of atma exist is always exist but by the avidya potency it gets covered it just gets covered we ourselves are removed from our innate happiness if you say and we are unaware of that spiritual bliss which is actually our constitutional property if i have to say bhunje seva sukh nitya parishad gana bhunje seva sukh in the spiritual world the living entities 
are serving Krishna and enjoying eternal bliss. But we have no knowledge of it, is it not? That's why we are engaging in sense gratification. Who will engage in sense gratification if has any taste for, if he get a glimpse of taste for the bliss of bhakti? As is written in Chaitanya Chirtamit, Jari Aage Trin Tulya Chari Purusharth. If a person get even a scent of bhakti, even a scent of bhakti, that will make everything distasteful in this world, even up to the bliss of liberation. So we are also in darkness, unaware of the spiritual bliss which is the property of the soul. And it perceives lamentation and illusion which is in connection with Krishna. I won't go further, this is sufficient for today. I'll open, uh, uh, now we stop the class and some devotees can ask a question and I'll answer, try to answer that. Any question? Yes, Prabhu. Put the mic to them. And I have to repeat the question, is it not? So that our devotees can also hear because this ma mic is not catching on IVTV. If you are saying it was complicated, I agree. Not complicated, then thank you. <laughs> Otherwise, we still feel it is complicated. I expect that. Yes, Prabhu, please. Prabhu, in the beginning of your class, you highlighted Prabhupada's point in the whole world. Yes. That uh, if the living entities uh, do not have to be covered by Maya, they do not want to. Want to be so. The last line of the purport Prabhupada says actually, the living entities are not illusory. We, we are not illusion. We are truth. We exist past, present, and future. For they are parts of the Supreme Energy, the Supreme Lord, and do not have to be covered by Maya if they don't want to be. So. Yes. So uh, I'm, I'm glad uh, in today's class, uh, it's the first time I'm coming across this point. Yes. Uh, and, uh, Me too. Uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah. And, uh, it's very, uh, very heartening and uh, novel. But uh, I would request if you could uh, expound, explain about this as much as possible. So the question, if I am getting the question correctly, the living entity is not, will not be covered by Maya if it does not want to do so. Uh, you want some more explanation? Who is forcing us to break the regulative principles? Just one example. Has someone put a pistol on his, on our forehead? Is it called forehead? Temple? Temple? If you don't drink liquor, I'll kill you. Has that problem faced by any devotee here? I have never faced that problem. If you don't eat meat, you will be shot. Any objections to that? You have ever faced that problem? And what about eating jalebis in some whatever dhaba? Where has the dhaba wala has put you a gun in front of you? Now, now somebody say, that is not maya. But see, Shula Bhakti Siddhanta Thakurji of ate one mango, I don't know, as a small child and he considered it such a great offense that he never ate mangoes. So if you have eaten jalebis, which are not offered to Krishna, then you should never eat jalebis again. <laughs> but we say, now this is chalta hai. So who, who is getting bound? Has Lord Krishna not told us in Teen Tera 3.30 Bhagavad Gita Yagya Sheshta Sino Santo Muchante Sarva Kil Vishai Bhunjate Tetvagham Papa Ye Pachantyatma Karanat Krishna himself has told a person who eats prasadam he becomes free from every kilbish. Kilbish means contamination. And a person who eats only for his own sense gratification becomes bound. So what is the answer Prabhupada? Who is getting bound? Is Lord responsible for our getting bound if we eat food not offered to Krishna? I am just giving one example. Mahaprabhu, okay, Krishna is very strict. Let's see what Mahaprabhu says. Mahaprabhu says, if somebody chants Hari only once, what does he chant? Hari. But does not criticize anyone else. I will personally, I means Mahaprabhu will personally deliver him. Do you know this? You must have known. So who does not know this? And even if I am telling you, and even if you are hearing, 
यू स्टिल से नहीं थोड़ा तो चलता है हाउ कैन आई नॉट क्रिटिसाइज डिवोटिस आई हैव टू डाइजेस्ट ब्रेकफास्ट इट इज टू हैवी इस ओन एस भक्ति विज्ञान महाराज बस गिविंग क्लास इस वाई डू वी क्रिटिसाइज डिवोटिस वेन वी नो इज हार्मफुल इफेक्ट इट फील्स गुड इट फील गुड इज इट नॉट वी आर नॉट गोइंग टू एसोसिएट विद बैड पीपल नॉन डिवोटिस ओनली डिवोटिस सो सो यू सी we are our self getting bound is it not i'm giving you two examples and then we can and and less so much it's okay if i say it's okay means at least we can we keep on hearing and then we keep on trying to improve ourselves right just a, such a simple thing all contract of our deliverance is on mahaprabhu not even 16 rounds krishna only once so who's telling us to criticize has someone put a pistol on our temple hey criticize some devotee so subah se bola nahi kuch speak something negative is it not so we have to learn up, uh, again and again by shastra and then we can choose krishna every moment we have a choice to choose krishna or maya so we keep on choosing yes i hope that answers your question okay so i was looking at this from the point of view when i just said that the uh, living entities do not have to be covered with maya they do not want to be so from the point of view of when when the living entity was hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare you got the answer i have no answer for that when and how and how and why we are right now here entangled in material world if now also we can rectify ourselves and choose to say no to maya that will be a greater thing and all that questions you can ask one person i tell you when you meet krishna you ask him he knows everything shubh krishna does not know anything <laughs> okay so please ask krishna he is the instructing spiritual master when brahma ji shook hands with krishna that is the highest realization so when you when krishna shakes hand with you you ask krishna maybe we'll forget about that question okay <laughs> so don't ask that question when we came not came i no authority to speak i also don't know about my, myself to ask leave it leave it right now we have a choice to serve krishna every moment we have a choice nobody can stop us from serving krishna if we serve krishna we become liberated okay the question was that that i understand okay yeah, yeah. my point was as you said we choose to be bound right you you mentioned that so uh, we chose to be bound i am not saying anything when we chose you don't go in past right now talk about present we are choosing to be bound i will put it like this is it okay easy to digest we are choosing to be bound after like after 9 am we can choose to eat prasadam or eat something else speak about krishna speak something else like that something i will put it like like that yes prabhu क्वेश्चन इज वी मैं अबाउट योग माया और महा माया इज इट दैट ओनली बाई द मर्सी ऑफ स्पिरिचुअल मास्टर वी गेट कनेक्टेड टू योग माया इज इट द क्वेश्चन यस यस बिकॉज default mode which we are in is maha maya we know only the aunty we don't know the mother aunty you understand aunty means durga aunty a mother means shrimati radharani so we don't know about shrimati radharani and her mercy and like that so the spiritual master tells us devim prakriti mashrita what is that shloka mahatmanas tu maam partha devim prakriti mashrita bhajante ananya manaso gyatva bhutatim bhavim so because they have taken shelter of spiritual energy they teach us how to take shelter of spiritual energy. yes there is no other way there is no other way. okay yes please hello hello krishna um, i have a question i'm not sure if these are synonyms or they are different terms so you you mentioned that uh, vidya shakti vidya yeah and um, you come across term like jnana shakti And Gyan Shakti. Yes. Also, about consciousness. Consciousness. Yes. So, and there is chit potency. Chit potency. Yes. So, are they synonymous or is there relationship? See, the Vidya people? is actually mode of goodness. Vidya oh. is mode of goodness, and it can give Brahman realization when it has some elements of bhakti. That has been explained by the Acharyas. With, if we talk exactly, Vidya, Avidya, and Pradhan, they are three sections of Maya. But what you're talking about, chit Shakti is spiritual of of Krishna. That is different. But uh, 
But when see that the same shloka is seen from different different angles, what we are talking. Yoga Maya is not Vidya actually. But I am mean, saying I only explain only a partial, very like 10, 20 percent of the commentary. If you read the whole thing, it goes further and further. Vidya Shakti only gives us. It removes avidya, it removes that absorption in the body and it gives realization of Brahman if it has some elements of bhakti. But then this bhakti destroys this vidya also because it cannot give you perception of Paramatma. Okay? So, um, so vidya, vidya, so it's material. <laughs> it is material. Anand Krishna Krishna Prabhu, you have to say something? What about consciousness? Consciousness is the chetana. Consciousness is the property of the soul. Consciousness means I exist and I am or if you say Gyan Shakti or consciousness means I exist. What is your name Prabhuji? Amarindra. Amarindra Prabhu. So when I say Amarindra and if other devotee is not named Amarindra, so you know I am talking to you. But this camera, XD Cam Sony, his name is written there. He does not know that I am talking to him. So that awareness that I exist that and I am different from others is not there in this camera. This is the symptom of consciousness. This is because of our consciousness or it's called Gyan Shakti of the Jiva that I exist and I am different from others. This is not, nothing to do with Vidya or anything like that. It always there. Gyan Shakti of the Jiva is always there and I exist. As conditional souls, are we not aware that I am existing? We are all are existing. It has nothing, it, it gets mixed up in the sense that we think that we are the body but it's still Gyan Shakti, that awareness that I exist is always there. So, can I say that uh, we have the knowledge that we exist? Yes, we have the knowledge that we exist. That is called Gyan Shakti. Yes. Okay. So, it's 9 a.m. So, we'll stop here. Srila Prabhupada ki jai, Sri Chaitanya Chartamit ki jai, Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai, Nitai Gaur Premanande.